in the Old Testament we have ceremonial laws, mm -hmm. we have uh, civil laws, and we have moral laws. So, to us New Testament believers, what laws are applicable to us, Pastor? Yeah, this is the reason. <clears throat> you know, people try to easily divide these laws as ceremonial, civil laws, civil and uh, moral. moral. And I did not call this as ceremonial. I call it as worship. Uh, specifically for this reason. Because when you use the word ceremony, it kind of gives an idea of a kind of a ritual. It takes out the sting of the relationship it talks about between God and us and our neighbors. And therefore all these laws, some of them like what I mentioned in the worship laws, the animal is replaced by the person Jesus and his death. But the significance of that is still there. Do we give sacrifice? Answer is yes. How? By faith. So it is not gone. So civil laws, because we relegate all these administrative laws, because now Israel is a theocratic nation a nation that was formed by their faith. God is the center. The king is only a representative of God. God is the real king. And therefore, you know, the laws are given for the king and the people are the judges so that there will be justice in the society. The administrative laws basically talk about justice and equality. So now, are they applicable to us? We may not have a government that would, you know, have these kinds of things, but we have a community of God, and we need to have this, justice in us, equality among us, and righteousness expressed in our relationship with our people, even outsiders. And therefore, when you call the civil law as something like administrative setup, but these principles are still applicable to us. Moral laws, we don't have to say much, because all these moral laws tells us and what is right and what is wrong. And therefore, you know, we know, you know, stealing is wrong. We know adultery is wrong. We know lying is wrong. We know covetousness is wrong. And therefore now we have no way to escape and say, I do not know. I know everything. And therefore, you know, when I come to commit any one of these sins as a person of God, you know, the law or that word of God convicts me. That's what the work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, as you read Romans chapter 8, the Spirit of God who lives in us, the work of the Holy Spirit, as Jesus mentioned, you know, when I go, it is good for me to go. John's Gospel 14. So the Spirit of God will come in you and he will remind you of all that I taught you. And therefore, when you talk about the conviction, the Spirit of God who lives in us convicts us when you are tempted to do something, tend to do something which is not correct, which is sinful. And then it is that relationship with God and the fear of God prevents me from doing it. And therefore, you know, when you talk about these laws, we have to take all the laws of the Old Testament. All the laws are applicable to us. We cannot say, okay, ceremonial law. I don't want, I know it's over. We cannot say these are civil laws only for the country to administer. So you say spiritual significance is there for us? I don't want to use that word spiritual. The significance of every law. Because when you spiritualize something, there is some kind of an allegorization coming in. Pastor, we are not living in a, uh, a government ruled uh, under Israel and that laws are not applicable for us. Okay. But the Let spirit me... behind the law is applicable for us. That's what you're telling. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. We can say that. Suppose the government says, you know, like in the case of Daniel, here is the statue. You have to bow down before the statue at the ring of the bell. Can we do that? We cannot do that. Why? It is because of God's command. And therefore, there is 
a situation where we have to i would use the word disobey there is a limitation to submit to any civil authority and we cannot just blindly obey everything they say and therefore now when you look at these laws they give us an understanding of our total lifestyle our spiritual lifestyle our relationship with the other people in our community believer community and our relationship with outside of the believers community and to the rulers and everyone and therefore we cannot just kind of relegate many of these laws as something not acceptable but uh, some of them may be temporal and which has been fulfilled um permanently by Jesus so there is as you said the spiritual aspect of it or the significance of it that we have to keep in our life and what do you talk about the food loss pastor the food loss of not eating certain kind of food in the old testament and we are not practicing that yeah so what is the spirit behind that law okay when you talk about the food laws <clears throat> sometimes now some explanation is some of them are hygienic and some would indicate you know it is because the canaanite community had done that god had prevented them from doing it for example pig god said not to eat pig the pig is a sacred animal for the canaanites yes i cannot say you cannot eat pig okay the pork today because we are living in a different environment but the principle behind in terms of mixing I, yes so that can be accepted and therefore you know even those laws what we call it as the uh, clean and unclean laws many of them are coming from the cultural background that is there even the sexual relationship the marriage relationships you know how we say for example in egypt the sister and brother would get married it was common but it cannot be done in israel so these kinds of laws actually motivated because of the community or the environment in which they lived what they should do and what they should not do and uh, the principles of which that needs to be applied to us and uh, which is very very realistic for us